These are the top 10 Excel tips and tricks from my YouTube shorts. I hope you like it. In Excel, did you know that you can put a mini chart on each individual cell here? Let me show you how it's done. Select the area that you want to put a chart. Then after that, go to insert. And after that, in this section of spark lines, click on line. And after that, make sure you select it on this one here and select all the areas that you need to highlight. And then click on OK. You can see a trend line will appear. You can also do bar chart too. Select the area that you want to put bar chart in. Then go to insert again. And on spark lines, click on columns. Make sure you click on this one here. And then like before, select the area. And then click on OK. And you can see all this appears. You can also, the trend also changes dynamically. Like I say, for example, if you put one here, see how the trend changes. If you want to flip your table from horizontal to vertical, uh, in, in other words, transpose your data from row to column and vice versa, this is how you do it. First, select the whole table, mine will be from here, all the way to the end of the table, right about here. And anywhere inside the selected area, right click and click on copy. And then place the cursor where you want to paste it, right click on this arrow here. You select transpose as you can see on my vertical axis is the date previously used to be on the horizontal and my cryptocurrency titles are now horizontal previously was vertical if you want to label each row in our excel this is how you do it manually you select the two cell that you want to increase and you drag all the way down Yes, this is how you get the series numbers in series each rows. But what if you want to label say ten thousand rows? Do you do a drag again? Let me show you a more productive way. Make sure you are in home. Then you go fill series, and here you select column, and then you enter the end row which is ten thousand, and then click OK, and you can see there's ten thousand rows with a series of numbers. This tool is also handy if you want to label the horizontal column as well. Make sure you're in home again, fill, series. In here, make sure you're selected as row now. And let's say you want to do 20 and click on OK. You can see 20 rows are labeled in series. In Excel, if you have to enter a series of date, do not do this like 1st of March. Uh, 2nd of March and 3rd of March I think you got the idea it's long-winded and it's very difficult and tedious the best way to do would be to enter the very first day on the cell here and then on this small little square here you want to click and drag to however many days you want say you want 16 days and you get all 16 days furthermore you have an option of if you click on this small little icon here and the pull down arrow you can also show uh, days you can also show weekdays, you can show months, first of every month for this example, and the year. If you have two separate tables on your single sheet, like for example, this table and this table, and you want to highlight, let's, let's say this table to do some work on it, what normally people does is that they go like that and they drag until the very end of the table. This table is not too bad. I've only got 100 rows. What if it's got 1,000 rows, like slightly longer table, like this table here, right? So a best way to do this and a more productive way to do this would be to place your cursor inside the area of that table and press Control A. This will effectively select uh, the whole table on that sheet. Again, if you want to select this table here, place your cursor here and press Control A and you will select the whole thing. And after that, you can apply highlights or you can apply table formatting if needed to be like that. Excel's REPT function repeats a given character for a user specified number of time. The syntax for that would be equal REPT, open parenthesis, the character that you want to repeat, which is X for me for now, 
comma, and the number of times you want to repeat, say 41. And then you'll repeat 41 X's for this cell. And you can actually apply it to the whole column. This is two and so on. You can also make it more prettier. Instead of putting X, you can put a pipe and then it's starting to shape like a chart. And also you can use a char instead of a ASCII character itself, as in C-H-A-R, say 110, which is a ball. But you're going to have to change this into a different font type called web game. And you can see it's shaping up to be a chart like that. Let's make your REPT chart a bit more advanced and use all the available symbols and fonts in your computer. First launch character map. You'll be given this window here. Select the font that you want, say web wingding here, sorry. And then let's say if you want this one here. So the hex number is CB. In here, you're gonna have to type a function call called hex to decimal open parenthesis, double quote, CB, close quote, and close it. And make sure you change this to wing ding. And there you go. And you can apply it to all your remaining cells. So this one opens a big of can, kind of worm there. So you can apply any of these characters with this hex number. If you have blank rows like that, do not do this. This will take eons to remove one row at a time, especially if your data is a lot bigger than what I have here. So I'm gonna undo everything. The best and the productive way to do this is to press Control G, which will come up a pop-up for go to. Click on special, select blanks, then you click on OK. This will select all the blank rows. Now press Ctrl minus and select entire row and you click on OK. This what it does is that it gets rid of all the blank rows for you. Easy. If you want to totalize this row, what you do is you put, click on the cell, say equal sum, open parenthesis and highlight the cells that you want to totalize. This is a relatively slow process, although you can copy and paste eventually, but this is not what we're gonna do. Another way to do it would be to click on the cell, click on auto sum, and then they'll type all those details for you. But that's much, much faster way to do this rather than that. First, highlight the cells that you wanna totalize, including the total column, and press alternate equal. This will totalize everything for you on this column here. Another way you can do it is you can also totalize the ones at the bottom as well. What you have to do is highlight everything. Don't only include the last column, F, but also include row 24. And you press alternate equal, and you'll totalize everything for you in this column and in this column as well, which is this total here. If you have an Excel spreadsheet table that looks like this, try not to do this. It's too much work and tedious. There's two ways to get around this. The first way is to place your cursor anywhere on the table and press Ctrl A, which highlights only that table. Once the table is highlighted, click on Home and go to Cells, Format, Auto Fit Row Height, and then you go Cells, Format again, Auto Fit Column Width, and that's one way to do it. The second way to do this would be to place your cursor outside the table or anywhere else and press Ctrl A. This will highlight the whole sheet. Alternatively, you can click on this side, this cell here, and you highlight the whole sheet. Then what you do now is on any of this gray vertical line, double click it. You will auto fit the uh, column and double click this horizontal gray line. You will auto fit the row. On my YouTube channel, I regularly share Excel tips and tricks every day. Make sure you subscribe to stay updated.